Is it an ego activity? Is contemplation an ego activity? No, I don't think so. It is activity of the intellect. You already know what is the egoic activity. It is the one that creates the identity. It says I. After every event that happens, it classifies the event as me, mine or not mine. Never forget the not mine. That is also ego, not me. That is also egoic activity. And once this uh, division has happened into me and not me, uh, it appears as a thought. So sometimes we confuse the uh, intellect with the ego and the ego with intellect. Actually, the ego is a part of the intellect, but it is, it is not as evolved as the intellect. So we have divided this one layer into two. We say that the lower intelligence is egoic in nature and the higher intelligence is not egoic in nature. The higher intelligence can actually disable the ego. It can see its activity and it can uh, command it and the actions can be stopped. You already know all these things. And one of the activity of the higher intellect is transcending the survival and thinking that, knowing that, which is hardly useful for survival. That is what we call as contemplation. So egoic activity is something different. It is mostly about the survival. It is trying to survive and so it generates these thoughts that are helpful in survival. But most of the time these thoughts are of no use for gaining knowledge. Actually they are a hindrance to your knowledge. So contemplation is totally opposite of egoic activity you can say. Last step in the illusion? Not at all. Not at all I think. It is an illusion itself. Contemplation hap is happening in the illusion. What is this illusion saying? That I am the illusion. This is very strange. This is happening. There is an ability in us that we can cut the illusion using the illusion. There is an ability in us we can cut the mental activity that is producing the illusion using the mind itself. It is very strong. This intellect is very strong. It can cut through the illusion. It never gains anything actually. It never gains any knowledge of what is not the illusion because there is nothing to know there. It simply uh, sheds the ignorance. The ignorance is in form of blind beliefs, assumptions, indoctrination and who knows what. It is something which sees through the illusion but it does not know the reality. Remember this, contemplation can only cause the assumptions or beliefs to disappear. When checked thoroughly, this is called rationality, these um, unfounded beliefs can be dropped. That is all contemplation is doing. It is not ending the illusion. It, it may look like that, oh, it has finally cut through the illusion, but you know, the illusion continues. You see, so uh, probably I don't understand what you mean by the last step in the illusion. By the, do you mean that there is no illusion after this? But that is not true. The whole thing is happening in the illusion. Is it like watching the empty experience or doing nothing while the life unfolds? No, the contemplation can be of many types. If you simply be the experiencer, like when he says watching the experiencer, it is impossible, isn't it? Who is there to watch the experiencer? So slight uh, impurity in the language, but no problem, I got a point. Like being the experiencer only, knowing that I am the experiencer, which means awareness and letting everything happen. No, it is not like this. Contemplation is reflecting upon what is happening. It is not simply sitting. When you contemplate the events that are happening in your life, it is very, it is an activity. The mind is active, the intellect is active here. And sometimes in the contemplation, you can forget the experiencer. It is possible. So, I think uh, your past uh, training is coming in between here. In some of the traditions, contemplation means awareness, contemplate on your true nature. Now, what are you going to contemplate there? You simply remain aware. I am this witness, that's all. I am this experiencer, that's all. So, it may mean that in that context, but on the path of knowledge, contemplation is active thinking using the intellect. Using the intellect for something more than survival. It is not inactivity like other paths. We don't put the mind to rest in case of path of knowledge. We use it. Are there rules, stepping stones or traps in contemplation? Yes, there are rules. Yes. It uh, must be done under the guidance of a teacher 
otherwise it is simply thinking and you you know what is thinking it is just a tangled stream of thoughts here and there it just running here and there random chaos of thoughts that is thinking it's not contemplation there is a article on my blog which is called the art of introspection and there is a podcast episode also the art of introspection so i use the same word you know for contemplation introspection is means the same thing introspection is more interesting because it is looking within introspection so i i sometimes use these two words but they mean the same thing that um juggling in the mind thoughts about uh, nature of reality nature of the experiencer nature of the existence all the philosophical matters trying to find the truth of it trying to compare your thoughts with your experience and so on so everybody is most welcome to read that thing the art of introspection and it also gives you a hint of the guru field while contemplating while introspecting you can connect to the greater memory and from there you get the hints you get a little bit of push from there from the guru field you will be given a new thought you will be told that look this thought is not correct and sometimes you will see that it is beyond the ability of this particular intellect which you call my intellect so there is a metaphysical angle also which i have mentioned which nobody else mentions so it is much more than thinking now it is seeing direct seeing and then uh, utilizing your means of knowledge to uh, gain the knowledge and then remain established in the knowledge so yes there there are these rules and you should not forget the three steps of the path of knowledge listening then contemplating thinking and then abiding you can you can actually uh, insert one more step there which was not there in traditional advaita or traditional path of knowledge which is writing i have introduced this step because of the modern limitations on the mind it is distracted is a distracted mind and you don't have 3 or 4 years to train it you want the results now so we have used this shortcut of writing so sometimes i mention it that now there are four steps listening writing thinking and uh, abiding the thinking is simply verification what is there what was said is it right is it wrong is it accurate is it faulty is it logical not logical and then beautiful thoughts will emerge in your mind realizations will happen and you will get hints inspirations automatically this is the whole process so these are the stepping stones if you contemplate without listening to the guru you know what happens it is like totally monkey mind you know there is not, not nobody who is guiding the thoughts so the newcomers you can see in their questions and in their discussion just chaos of thoughts nothing makes sense so i hold the hand of the mind and guide it how to think all my discussion is like this only holding the hand of the intellect look this is how we think i am showing it so nothing to worry because i i started like this only <laughs> i had no idea how to think simply copied the teachers how do how do they think how do they find faults how do they detect what is illogical you need to um, see these things you need to copy these things from the masters so these are the stepping stones is the object of contemplation irrelevant since the goal of bliss can be found in any form yes the whatever you're thinking about is not going to give you bliss the bliss is already there that is what you need to know you need to realize that bliss is the background of contemplation it is not obtained by com- contemplation what happens is the contemplation kills the unwanted thoughts by replying to these queries that are happening in the mind why is this so what is that who is this and all these questions are there and when the knowledge is there these questions can be answered and they do not arise and then you find the peace oh everything is settled now it will look like as if the mind is not working now it will look like that peace now peaceful which is which can be like a thought that finally i know everything it is not about knowing everything it is just silencing all the questions all the doubts all the confusion is gone so now the peace can be found 
Sometimes that is misunderstood as bliss. But no, the bliss was always there. Even while the contemplation or the thoughts were going on. So yes, that is right. It is irrelevant. What are you thinking about? The, as soon as the questions are dropped, there is bliss.